could you survive on welfare? It's a question that's divided the nation. The rising cost of living is leaving the unemployed in dire straits. People living on job seeker need a greater level of support. People are unable to cover basic costs of living, such as housing, food, transport, healthcare and utilities. It's easy to get by on welfare. <laughs> You're fucking joking, mate. But increasing welfare would cost taxpayers billions. The best form of welfare is a job, Mr Speaker. We're making it too easy for them to say, I don't need to work. I've seen grandfathers, fathers and sons all on unemployment benefits. Why? Australia spends over $180 billion a year on welfare. I'm on the disability pension. Job seeker payment. More than the health, education and defence budgets combined. I get $700 a fortnight. But is that enough? All politicians sometimes need to step out of the office. They think living on the dole's easy. They've never been on welfare. They need to come down onto my level and see what it's like to live like this. Three prominent Australians are going on a journey into Australia's welfare system. New South Wales Greens MP Jenny Leong believes we should be doing more for the disadvantaged. We need to be demanding that this government takes firm action to ensure no one is too poor to be able to live. But does she, or her political colleagues, really understand what life is like on the breadline. As a member of parliament, you are so privileged. People that are in ministerial positions, that have drivers, that have staff, and then those people, they reckon they could get by on the welfare that is basically putting people in poverty. There's no way. Caleb Bond is a Sky News commentator and News Corp journalist. What the hell is toxic masculinity? I mean, what about toxic femininity? When are we going to start talking yeah. about that? He's compared welfare recipients to heroin users. The welfare system, it's not meant to be an income. It's not meant to be necessarily comfortable. Julie Goodwin is an author, TV presenter, radio host and household name. You are Australia's first master chef. The reason I'm going on this journey is I certainly know what it's like to not have money in the bank. There's always been a stigma surrounding collecting unemployment. I had to do that when I was younger and I felt the stigma of having to do that. I would hope that our views of it are changing, but I'm not so sure they are. For nine days, all three are going to live on the welfare system. If cash is this tight, I'm pretty much happy to do anything. Oh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel slightly uncomfortable. They'll be meeting and living with fellow Australians who know what life is really like on welfare. This is how we have to live. Going to We're rest. surviving. For fuck's sake, isn't that what the government's supposed to do in the first place? There must be a bit of DV in the next um, block. The further I go along this journey, the more traumatic and devastating things become. Like, I've done everything that I can. I, I think it's criminal that the welfare that they're on is not enough for them to eat with. Do people deserve more? A lot of people probably don't understand what it's like. Or have millions of Australians simply become reliant on the welfare system? Twenty-one-year-old Caleb Bond started work as a cadet journalist at the age of 16 in his home city of Adelaide. People from Adelaide are very fun. You know, Alexander Downer and, and people like this. People compare me to Christopher Pine all the time. I get along with Christopher quite well. He's a very fun bloke. For the next three days, Caleb will be trying to get by with people on various forms of welfare. I don't believe in a welfare system that would replace a job. It's there as a safety net, and it should be there as a safety net. Caleb's meeting Pierre, who lives on the disability support pension. The DSP supports almost 4% of the Australian population who are unable to work due to a permanent medical condition. How are you, mate? Good, nice to meet you, Pierre. Pleased to meet you, Caleb. Nice to meet you. And what's uh, your bird's name? This is Caesar. Caesar? <laughs> How long you had him? Um, 12 and a half years. He's got 52 to go. Jesus. 
So you probably outlive me. And if you don't look good. after yourself, he may outlive you as well. <laughs> pretty good. 59 year old Pierre has lived on the DSP for over 20 years. So my little treat in life is a, a coffee and a cigarette every morning. And that makes me feel like a normal citizen, believe it or not. Gets me out the house. Now, can I buy you a coffee? Well, yes, that'd be great. Pierre receives a payment of $840 a fortnight. This needs to cover rent, electricity, food, and medical bills. Pierre's order. Yep. Um, and, uh, One of the things that uh, I would say annoys me is when you see people who are on welfare who might spend their money on uh, alcohol or cigarettes. So this is your one ciggy for the day, is it? Yeah, in fact, I have to make a decision. I'll see how much... Um, I've got to go to get some food today. But I was hoping you could squeeze another packet of cigarettes in before pension day, so I've just got a, some tight budget at the yeah. moment. And I've got to buy these guys some food because they're nearly out. And that's something I've got to keep in mind, Caesar. What's your illness? Irritable bowel syndrome. So what, what do you deal with day to day? I can uh, maybe not hold food down, it's not the vomit. When it gets really bad and I have an attack, I'll vomit for days on end. Really? Wind up in hospital because I wind up dehydrating and on a drip. Oh, Out of Pierre's pension, he pays 25% for his social housing flat, leaving him $45 a day to live on. For the next two days, <laughs> Caleb will experience what Pierre's life on welfare is really like. Welcome to the, the abode. You'll have to excuse me, I haven't done the normal clean up with the parrots this morning. Pierre rescues injured and sick birds. Okay. He pays for their rehabilitation out of his own pension. This is Monkey. Right. Monkey fell out of his nest about six years ago. That's Joan of Arc. And that's Winston Churchill. <laughs> Hello, Winston. He dislocated his leg and broken it. So I took him down to my local vet, and $2,000 later, big operation, he's in a cast for months. Um, so I've got a $2,000 bill for a bird I don't even own and I'm paying off at the moment. Where do you get $2,000? I don't, I'm just having to, he's, he's generous enough to run the bill up for me right. and allow me three or four years to pay it off. I mean, I just paid 200 bucks off that last week because I got a bit behind. <laughs> I had the money there, but it means I've got no money till Thursday. You find yourself having to put I'm the birds head. ahead of yourself? Oh, somehow. definitely. Like, if, if, it's a, if it gets to a choice of I go with that food or they go with that food, it's, I can tell you which one goes. Pierre suffers from a chronic form of irritable bowel syndrome that's highly debilitating. Could you find a job? Um, not really, with the illness. I'm not, not sure I'd be capable of doing it. So what, what is your IBS like now? Well, this morning I got up and threw up all the bile off my stomach. Um, it seems to have settled down now. Um, How often would that happen? Uh, at least three or four times a week. Did you ever... Um, think when you were younger that you might be able to go back to work? It didn't really dawn on me. And that's the other thing, too, is that, you know, it took me years to admit that I had a disability. How much income would you have to earn to have your benefits cut off? I think you're allowed to earn 136 a week. So you would be worse off if you were working? Well, way worse off, yeah. You've got to make the most of what you've got, really, let's face it. It's nice of Pierre to let me into his life and let me sleep in his house. This one was rescued about six months ago, flew into a window. Pierre scrapes by on the DSP. But to be perfectly honest, I don't know whether I'm going to change my mind. Greens member for Newtown, Jenny Leong, is travelling to Wollongong to see what it's like living on welfare in regional Australia. I grew up in Adelaide in what was probably a very standard, middle-class, comfortable life. When I was a student, I was on Ostudy, but I was always in a situation where my parents were relatively comfortable. I knew that if something big happened in my life, I could have the benefit of ringing my parents and asking to borrow money. She'll be moving in with 41-year-old Shanine. Hi, Jenny. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we 
Was it a good trip? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jenny. I'm Shanine. Yeah, is it? yeah. Oh, nice so to meet good you. Good to meet you. How yeah, you too. Doing? Yeah, good. Thank you for meeting me. Shanine lives on the job seeker allowance. 25% of her payment goes on renting a two bedroom flat through social housing, which leaves her with $30 a day. So how long have you been in Wollongong for? Um, I grew up in Wollongong. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. yeah. But I moved away for a while to Queensland. Jenny will be staying in Shanine's spare room for free. I've been living here, like in this unit block, for six months. There's quite a lot of crime. Yeah. Um, drugs is just rife. Ten minutes' drive from the Wollongong CBD is the estate Shanine lives in. You'll notice that there's, it's quite camered up. There was an elderly gentleman that got um, killed, so everyone was standing over him for yeah. his pay and stuff. And eventually they took him up to the service station at the top of the street, got his pension out, and then they killed him and left him in, they left him in this um, oh. laundry block here. He was there for a few days. People were stepping over him to do their laundry. So, yeah, I usually have to lock my screen door, because, yeah. as you can see, my, kick, my door's been yeah, kicked in quite right. a few times. Yeah. Do you keep shoes on? Yeah. <laughs> Shanine studied social work and for many years worked for the council in Aboriginal community development. But for the past three years, Shanine relied on Newstart, now called the Job Seeker Allowance. I was in a relationship and, um, yeah, he severely beat me. So, um, yeah, like I, I had, I got now got a quiet brain injury um, from the beating and I was strangled. Her injuries were so severe, she was forced to quit her job. Yeah, I had to do physio, I had to learn how to walk and talk again. Two years ago, I couldn't do the pincher and pointer That's what that, I was going to say, that's the test, right? Yeah, I was on life support and stuff, so I had no, yeah, I had to sort of start all over again. So how does it feel, like, for you living here by yourself? Um, yeah, unsafe, very unsafe. If there's a neighbour, DV, and his, his partner, I get anxious because I can hear it all. After an earlier incident of domestic violence, Shanine was left unable to care for her children. My two main priorities, yeah. try and get my kids back yeah. in my care, but also to try and better my housing situation. Yeah. Shanine works to a strict budget. Yeah, I get 550 a fortnight, I'd say 150 towards rego. Um, around about $100 for fuel, probably, I think, $20 extra for electricity. Yeah. And, yeah, about $100 on smokes, yeah. which will leave me with 80 bucks. And, yeah, the 80 bucks that I get, yeah. it would be pretty much used on the kids to yeah. go on a visit. If I don't stick to my budget, I get, live with nothing for two weeks yeah, right. until I get paid again, yeah. which I did last fortnight. Yeah. Like, I literally yeah. lived on nothing for two weeks. Seriously, like, I can't even... I can't even comprehend that, like it's just too intense. Yeah. yeah. It's intense. For Jenny's first night, Shanine wants to make a special meal. Chicken, chips and salad? Yeah, let's yeah. do that. OK, cool. On her welfare budget, it's a rare treat. I feel, I guess, pretty overwhelmed. It's been one day, it, has, it hasn't been a, a long time. I think the, the thing that I would say is probably the hardest habit to break so far has been the fact that um, I don't know what's coming. Julie Goodwin is heading to Campbelltown in southwest Sydney. She's going to see firsthand how hard it is to survive on the job seeker allowance of $40 a day. I am not convinced that I'll survive very well on $40 a day. On its own sounds OK, but then you've got rent and you've got, I don't know, petrol or public transport. You've got to feed yourself. And that leaves nothing. Like most residents of Western Sydney, you need a car. So Julie's been given a second-hand vehicle to get around. I'm driving around on toll roads. If I was surviving on $40 a day, I don't know how I'd get by. The number of people on JobSeeker in Campbelltown is almost 50% higher than the national average. Some people are born with, you know, massive wealth behind them. Some people are born with huge amounts of support behind them. And some are born without that. 
People who are raised in really difficult circumstances don't have the same chances as other people to, to get ahead in life. Julie's new home is in crisis accommodation supplied for free by the Department of Housing. As a 50-year-old woman, Julie falls into the highest demographic facing homelessness in Australia. It's got a locking door, it's got a bathroom. That's about it. It's a very cute little bath. You have to choose which end of you you want to get wet. Well, it's a little microwave. At least I can heat things up, but um, not a whole lot of gourmet cookery going to be happening in here, I don't think. A few, few sirens outside the door uh, going by. Um, gosh, it's really pretty bleak. <laughs> I guess if you're in a situation where you've got to flee the home you're in or you're unsafe, that come to somewhere like this, I think it would be... I think it would be really hard. I think probably my first mission is going to be to find out where there's a, a supermarket or something nearby where I can go and stock up on a few supplies. When I start to think of all the bits and bobs that I might need, I don't know how far this $40 is really going to go. On the lookout for a shopping centre, and straight away, money is on Julie's mind. I had my eyes open before I drove in here to make sure that it wasn't a, a paid parking station as well. Got a couple of little tins of tuna, a packet of rice, I've got some broccolini and a piece of corn. Um, I've got some butter to go with the bread and I've got tea bags, sugar and milk. I've spent just on $27, leaving me $13. I still don't have a plate to eat off or a fork. I'm just going to go to the the Salvo store that I spotted. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thank Good. you. The plate was 50 cents and she threw the other things in for free. So that's a bargain. So I've been given the equivalent of the job seek payment. I went out to the supermarket and I felt I shopped quite frugally. Um, I bought the cheap brand of almost everything and I still only have $12 left. Half of the broccolini tonight. It's very simplistic to say, well, anyone can eat on $40 a day. You can, but it's about more than just eating. This is, it's about surviving and whether or not you've got an opportunity to thrive. There is an incredible privilege that I have as, as a very lucky individual that gets a significant wage as being a member of parliament. That means that I don't have to think about money all the time. If I want to buy something, I buy it. New South Wales Greens MP Jenny Leong is finding out firsthand about life on welfare with 41-year-old Shanine. Like how often would it be that you would eat a meal that would be like meat and like um, you kind of fresh salad and everything like that, oh, rather than baked beans and stuff. Probably once a fortnight. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to my payday, I'll usually pull all my pay out. Yeah. So that I can penny count. And like I smoke cigarettes, so therefore it's like, you know what I mean? I, sometimes I have to think, ah, oh, do I want a ciggies or do I want some meat this week? Yeah. Having to compromise on what to buy. Yum, it smells lovely. Wasn't always an issue for Shanine. Dropping from that big work wage to Centrelink benefits yeah. was probably the hardest thing for me because yeah. I was so self-sufficient. Thank you. <laughs> no, no worries. Like many women in Shanine's situation, yeah, she has no choice but to accept social housing. What you've just described in terms of like, you know, the planning and the shopping and the cooking and the and doing all of that, it's like it is way more of a load than anyone else that is privileged has to do in addition to all the other stress you're having. And if it's not that, then it's the screaming kids and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, a lot of them, like, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of them live outside. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Just, just hang of, out. out yeah. There. It's not you that we're looking at. It's all right. <laughs> well, then go. No one's asking you to be here. If you don't live here, don't complain. Fucking how rude. I think nobody needs that shit. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully when, when it gets dark, it'll quieten down a bit, but usually it's party time when it goes to get dark, so. So we might go up to the shop before it gets dark. I was going to say we should do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Shanine um, has run out of cigarettes and I feel like the least I can do um, if I'm staying at her house is to offer to buy a packet of cigarettes. A packet of cigarettes will cost $30, which is Shanine's total daily allowance after rent. People smoke and the idea that you can only smoke if you're rich or you can only drink alcohol if you're rich, I think is just a really problematic concept. A packet of holiday 20s, blue. Some people would say that smoking cigarettes isn't essential. Hello, can I get a packet of holiday 20s, please? Thank you. But as someone that used to smoke, I would say that if you are addicted to cigarettes, then the level of stress that it will cause you if you can't have a cigarette is significant. Just the cigarettes. Thank you. Caleb is living with Pierre who for over 20 years has lived on the disability support pension. Come, we're gonna go and get a haircut. <coughs> All right, now behave yourself. The welfare system exists basically to support people who need to be supported. It's not meant to be an income per se. It's not meant to be something that you exist on for a long time. It's not meant to be uh, necessarily comfortable. Hi, Hi. Caleb. Nice to meet you. Yes. Pierre's neighbour Lizzie supplements her own aged pension by offering $5 haircuts to fellow residents. Do you want a haircut, darling? I'm all right today, thank you. 15 odd years you said you've been cutting hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I've been in this department of housing since uh, 85. In this flat? Yeah. I paid $2.50 a fortnight. And you think you'll. Um, Stay here till you. I hope so. I hope they get in the me box. Yeah, but I did my hairdressing apprenticeship in the 60s, and then I travelled the world and did a lot of other stuff. I went to Vietnam as a go-go dancer in 1968. Right. And then I went to uh, America and didn't have a green card, so I auditioned at the psychedelic funhouse and became a striptease dancer. <laughs> and I travelled the world. I loved doing that. That was just a wonderful job. I really enjoyed it. There's no money in it. Unless you're working on the side or, you know, like, you're a very clever person. What do you think about this, handsome? Are you happy with this? Oh, I'm wrapped. OK, yeah, I'll just do it around the edges. How do you find living on the pension? I'm grateful I get it, but it's a struggle. It's not enough? Um, it's got to be enough, love. You yeah. know, that's what you're surviving on. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, know, yeah. you don't get to go to the theatre anymore. Yep. You know, you don't even to the swimming pool. It's eight dollars to yeah. get into the it's swimming just pool. All simple little things. You know, like you little before, yeah. minor things that people take for granted when going to the pictures. <laughs> yeah. yeah, none of that mm -hmm. because you don't have that money. Going to We're the surviving, rest. you know, and that's yeah. great. You know, I'm We're very thankful. grateful. Yeah. What do you reckon, Monkey? You look good. You like it? <laughs> But I mean, what did you say? You haven't had a haircut in years, did mm. you say? As you've heard, little, you know, all these little things add up, and you just wind up going without them, and you just. And that's one of them. It's not necessary, you know. So it's not going to kill you if you don't have a haircut. Does it feel like a luxury? Oh, of course it does. And you're really wrapped to have it after. It's something you've been wanting to do for a while, and been able to do. So of course it feels good. Yeah. So how much extra do you think you should be getting a week? Standard, I think, would be sixty-five dollars a day. What what would that extra hundred bucks a week let you do? Three meals on the table. Look, it's not you're not going to be really well off laying in luxury, sipping back um, champagne on a daily basis. It just gives you the three meals, pays your rent, and you might be able to go to the pictures once a month. I think if if Pierre wanted to do better on the money he has, he would have to budget carefully, and I'm not sure Pierre is doing that. Thank you.
For many Australians on welfare, trying to make ends meet can mean making tough choices on what to go without. Unemployed Australians are 23% more likely to experience food insecurity. You, you need to spend money to eat well. You need to exercise to be well. And, and all of those things can be out of reach if you are living on a few dollars a day. In southwestern Sydney, Julie is travelling to meet Uncle Dave to see firsthand how important food drops are in the community. Good morning, Julie. Lovely How'd you sleep? to see you. Very well, thank you. Chanel, Christian, nice to meet you. Chris. Uncle Chris, yeah. is it? Yeah. Nice to meet you nice too. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Uncle Dave, with help from Uncle Chris and Christian, operates a self-funded charity taking food donations to the less advantaged. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to take you around today to show you the food drop what we do and the pickup and get your get your hands on and you know we do this every every day of the week so yeah okay yes yeah, so every day it's, it's really um, a big journey for us hey Christian you know to make sure that we deliver on the front line to the to the families that are in, haven't got no food make sure they've got food for their kids to put on the table eh? for 12 years Uncle Dave has lived on the job seeker allowance. For over 55s, 15 hours a week voluntary work makes him eligible for the payment. I live on $540 a fortnight. I get $300 taken out on rent, $100 for food and $100 for electricity. So you tell me what's left. $40. At the height of the pandemic, demand for food relief from charities across Australia increased by almost 50%. Oh, wow. Fantastic. That's lots of food. Yeah, that's brilliant. This is amazing on so many different levels. Oh, food that the supermarkets would have discarded, <laughs> would have gone into landfill, is now being collected by the uncles and distributed throughout the community. This is great stuff. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. On average, Indigenous Australians have lower levels of employment and income. A lot of people out here at the moment, they're doing it pretty tough. They feel like they failed, you know, and I was like, you haven't failed, you haven't got a job. Yeah. And it was out of their control. We've got stacks of nice greens here. I'll distribute some of this to some other families as well. Thank you. No worries. Rightio, next delivery. You get vegetables, you get bread, you get, you know, maybe a couple of bottles of cordial or something, but it, it all helps. And so you managed to get around and share yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. with everyone, even... the neighbours up here, this guy over here. Bye, Julie! See ya! The last delivery of the morning is to Uncle Dave's sister, Chandra. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, Chandra, good to meet you. These are all Chandras. All of them? Yeah. Excellent. How would you manage without and these food deliveries? You use it my son is struggling, we're both from the dollar. Yep. Um, we've got health problems and stuff like that. And I just done $300 shop yesterday. Yeah. And we broke. You know what well, I mean? And we're struggling and struggling and struggling. So this organisation is a big help to us. A big help. Like yeah, my time okay. we pay our electricity, our gas. You know, we've got two bills to pay. Yep. And then we've got a few to pay too. We're left with nothing done. Having served prison time, Chandra finds it hard to get a job. So you went to prison when your kids were young? I went to prison in 2016. Yep. I got done for robbery in company on mm -hmm. mobile phone. Yep. I got three and a half years. Um, so that was my first time ever in prison. Oh, wow. Um, so I'd done three, uh, two and a half years straight, yep. 12 months parole. Yep. Wasn't allowed to home to my family. It killed me. Yeah. You know, I'm getting very emotional. It killed yeah. me to walk away from my brother and my mother yeah. and not being able to kiss her. Yeah. You know? I didn't ever have to use charity. Yeah. Ever in my life. What's the answer? What what can be done better? Um, a little bit more funding from the government mm -hmm. would benefit for us. When my boys were younger and, and we had a mortgage, we had to watch our budget and I was careful about what I spent on food and I'd kind of forgotten what it was like. Thank you so much. What Uncle Dave is doing is essential to these families. People would struggle to feed themselves if they were just relying on their government welfare payment. And what's extraordinary to me is that what he does is not funded by an organisation. The issue of Australians having enough to eat 
ought to be on the agenda at the big end of town, not just on the agenda for the people receiving welfare. In the inner city, Pierre also relies on charity to survive. So what are you waiting for now? Well, this is where we go to get the food once a week. So we'll line up and they'll hand out a bag of food to each person and a few bits and pieces. Do you come every week? Basically? Yeah, yeah. But Caleb's sympathy is being tested. First and foremost, the, the things people on welfare should be spending their money on are the essentials. Food, water, electricity, the bills. But Pierre is in the food queue because he wants to buy a packet of cigarettes. He, he said he's got about $30 and he, he wants to buy bird seed and a packet of cigarettes. I don't think that's the right decision to make. So what have you got here? Um, well, we've got our fruit and veggies. We've got a thing of milk. Apples, they're for the apples. fruits for the birds, yeah, I assume. Yeah, they're pretty much. Egg and bacon sandwich, which I often eat now. And, and then some then time... sausages. Sausages and, and some, some hamburgers. Yeah. And so that'll feed you for a week, will it? Yeah, it would. Choosing not to take free food, right. Caleb's going to see if he can feed himself on a welfare budget. We're at um, quarter past three and I haven't eaten lunch yet. Um, but uh, I suppose I'll have to go to the supermarket and try and budget my way through it. While you're going there to spend your pittance, you can spend a bit of mine. And uh, if I can ask you to get me a packet of cigarettes and some seed for him. A packet of that, which I think is $10. Oh, I know it's $10. And a packet of Pow Mau 20 reds. I'll be perfectly honest, I'm happy to buy you the seed. Yeah. But I would feel uncomfortable buying you cigarettes. Oh, OK. No worries what you're worried about, my health. No, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about your <laughs> no, health. No, I'm just worried about what we're... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about your health, but I, I guess I think... I think about the fact that's money that, you know, you could spend on food or something Well, like I've already that. got... As I've already told you, I've got enough food to last me to Thursday. I, so I, I would personally no, right. feel it's, uncomfortable. It, yeah, OK, cos personally you'd make the decision of staying with the food and buying the cigarettes, I get that, yeah. Um, but as I said, I've had enough food to sustain me, which is why I'm unable to make that to, fuck, to hell with the expense. We'll yeah. see when we get back. No worries. All right, let's go down and get these fucking cigarettes. I'm hanging out for a cigarette. Hey, <laughs> Caleb's a very nice young man. I think his heart seems to be in the right place. But it's about what the government gives to people to survive, to me. That's what it's about. So I really don't give a shit either way of what people feel about me. Yeah, and one of my first rules in life, actually, is it's none of my, none of my business what other people think of me. Caleb Bond is getting a first-hand insight into life on welfare. Oh, the supermarket! Having refused to buy Pierre cigarettes, he's only shopping for himself and the birds. I got myself some sausages and some bread and some cheese and an onion. So um, that'll cover... I mean, the sausages would be enough to cover probably two meals or even three to pinch. Also bought Pierre's bird seed, which is uh, weighing down my bag by four kilograms. Caleb's decided to draw a line in the sand on purchasing cigarettes for Pierre. I think Pierre's decision to spend his last $30 for the week on a packet of cigarettes as opposed to food is a, is a case of priorities being out of whack. I am making judgments about how Pierre spends his money. I mean, ultimately, that money has come out of the pockets of me and other taxpayers. I, I don't think it's unfair for me to judge or question the way he spends his money. If, if you're on welfare, sometimes you don't get to enjoy simple pleasures every day. I got myself some bread, which will go with uh, some sausages, yeah. which were marked down all the 25 cents. But they'll, but they'll you get, you get the creative, don't yeah. you? It forces and, you. And, you know, and I figured, you know, um, there's, what, eight sausages in there? I mean, you could make that into three meals. Yeah. Can you imagine if you did that for a few months? You'd get really good at it. Bit of sausage and bread, which I must say can hit the spot. 
think a welfare system should fundamentally make sure that everyone has the ability to live. Oh, yeah, I've smoked the joint out of it, haven't I? There are people who are genuinely needy uh, and deserve the help of welfare, which is something that we as a civil society provide through our taxes. I don't eat like normal people. Like one meal a day, perhaps two sometimes, that's it. And that's because of your IBS. Yeah, got... And anyone who abuses that system is fundamentally insulting people who actually do require welfare. <laughs> do you ever eat in peace? Sorry, you will from now on. No, in the kitchen. See you later. It's Julie's second day living on the welfare system. Even without having to pay rent, she's low on food and petrol and only has a few dollars left from her $40 a day allowance. So I'm off to spend some time with Uncle Chris and uh, I believe that we're going to try and supplement that income a little bit. Today we'll be um, picking up bottles and cans. Yeah. Excellent. So, so you up for that? Oh, totally. Return and Earn is a government initiative. For every bottle or can recycled, you earn 10 cents. So 10 cents a bottle, um, like what, what's your haul on a week, weekly basis? Maybe $20, 30 $20 or $30 a week? Yeah. Hey, that's all right. Other people are making more. There's a couple here. Look at that, eh? Yeah, a lot of people don't like you going through bins. OK. Some days are good, some days are bad, but yeah. It's a fair bit of work just for a little bit of money, isn't it? Yeah. While looking for bottles, Uncle Chris and Julie come across 64-year-old pensioner Helen. After I pay all my bills and everything, I have about $400 to live on. Yeah, and that's, that's in a fortnight? That's for a fortnight, so yep. 200 a week. Yeah. To buy food. 200 a week. And that, yeah. And how do you manage? Well, what you do, you just budget. You've got to really budget hard. You just can't survive. I've got emphysemia. Yeah, OK. I'm in stage four. Oh, wow. So, yes, I've got a lot of medication that I've got to buy. Yeah. Puffers. I just had a heart attack a couple weeks ago, oh, so hell that's enough, more medication. Sorry. Yeah. Um, because the thing has damaged my heart. Because I get a loan of Centrelink at Christmas time. Because I've got, I've got 18 grandkids and my great grandmother of four. So at Christmas you get a loan yeah, so that you can buy them a, so I can buy them a little present yeah. and then you pay that off over yeah, the year? Yeah, pay that off. Back wow. to yes. Okay. Yeah. And that leaves you under $30 a day yeah. for medication, yeah. food, emergencies, yeah. public transport. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Wow, Helen. So you don't get much, but you do, you don't survive. But wow. I've got a roof over my head. I didn't think I took a lot for granted, but um, I, I realised that I do, I take a lot for granted. I won't anymore. <laughs> It's Caleb's last day with Pierre before he continues his welfare experience on his own. <laughs> I've camped before, so it ain't any worse than that. You uh, taking the toilet, are you? Oh, no, I'm yeah. the sit. All right. Morning, anyway. Sorry? Good morning. Oh, morning, mate. Sorry. A lot of people uh, probably don't understand what it's like to live in a, a joint like this, a housing commission joint like How this. How are we? Now, I've heard the stories, I've seen around the joint, I've, I've seen what it's like. Um, I could only speak from my experience, which is that uh, some public housing is awful. Um, and, and that's a fact. Pierre's morning routine involves taking care of his birds. See how quick and easy that is? All right, who's hungry? Birdie num num's time. Come on. It, w it would appear that um, my best efforts to stop the birds eating my bread has not worked. As Cleopatra. It's a bird. As Cleopatra. Has eaten my bread. I suppose from 
a basic perspective, Pierre's birds, I, I think, are probably his best friends or, or his, his closest companions. So he basically said they're like his children to him. Have you got newspaper? Um, yeah. Yep. And I suppose it's why he makes decisions like he did yesterday about getting free food because it allows him to fund his pets. Which on one hand, I would argue isn't the best use of money. But on the other hand, I understand why he wants to have them and what they mean to him uh, and the, the struggle he might have if he didn't have them. It's opened my eyes to, to something I hadn't considered before. There is children. There is uh, dependence. I love them, they love me. That's a pretty good thing, I reckon. And uh, there's a reason for me to be around, really. Caleb's time with Pierre has come to an end. But as a journalist, he still wants to know more about people living on the DSP. Pierre is on disability support pension because he can't work. So there's not necessarily the element of encouragement needed for someone like that to go and get a job. So would I be open to the possibility of people on disability support pension receiving more money? Perhaps I would. All right, Pierre. Thank All you very much. No worries, mate. Take care. Maybe even an extra $50 to, to live a decent life. How safe do you feel wandering around at night? I don't. This pretty much is a crossroads for people like myself that have survived domestic violence. And being in a living situation like this, it's actually traumatic. Reported incidents of domestic violence in this part of Wollongong are 20% above the national average. Yeah, this is like a regular occurrence, sadly. It's like, I think they were just here yesterday too. Yeah. Oh, here they come. Wow. Yeah. That's, oh, that's minimal. <laughs> that's, really? Yeah, that means that there's not that much happening. There must be a bit of DV in the next um, block. Roger on, you did one to one. You can hear it screaming. What's happened? This is the boyfriend. Or... OK. Yeah, right. We actually yeah. all thought he was inside because the way she was screaming. And now he's here. Yeah. Oh! This is crazy. Like, it must make you feel, like, just edgy and nervous, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to go back inside or are you right? No, it's OK. Witnessing domestic violence right on her doorstep is a painful reminder for Shanine. Oh, here comes an ambulance. Oh it my feels gosh, like that's, that's not a good sign, thing. is it? It's quite sad, it is. Yeah. It's full on. It's full on. Yeah. People are just used to this stuff happening here, and that's a that's a really bad sign. Yeah. Is it? Police are called to domestic violence incidents way too often, but people that are living in this public housing don't feel as secure in their home as people do in other areas. <laughs> All right, well, I might head off to bed. Okay. Thank you for having me. That's OK, no worries. All right. And having it happen all the time would be really stressful. So here I am uh, in Wollongong and the main thing that I'm feeling is absolute frustration. All of the exhausting stresses that Janine has to deal with in her life, in addition to all of the trauma that she has been through, she doesn't need that stress anymore. New South Wales Greens MP Jenny Leong has been living with Shanine to better understand life as a single woman on JobSeeker. I feel really tentative about where we're going next. But the time has come to move on and go it alone. I've had, you know, what I would call the luxury of having Shanine show me around, host me, you know, allow me to, to share her home, give me a comfy spare room to sleep in. Jenny's heading to nearby Port Kembla to see what kind of accommodation she could afford on a welfare budget. It's been making me think about what happens to all of those people who are completely isolated and just are given a place to live. 
Oh, cool. I left you a note at my last 20. No, you didn't need to do that. No, then. no. I mean, like, I've been here. I've been, like, using your bloody water. I've been using your, <laughs> all your stuff. Ah, it's fine. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, be good. Yourself, be good at it. Yeah, I will. Yourself, I will, for sure. I mean, Janine and I basically spent, you know, the last two days, two nights together. And so it feels strange to sort of be by myself. The aim was to put me outside my comfort zone and, uh, you know, I think we're about to get outside my comfort zone. Like many on welfare, Jenny has no bond and no credit card. So her only option is a room in a boarding house. Nearly 20,000 Australians call boarding houses home. This place is costing me 30 bucks for the night for rent. With my 40 bucks a day, that means that I've got $10 to spend. There's a mattress. That seems good. I was pleased to see that there's at least those security bars there and a screen door and a door, because I know Shanine was saying that she locks her screen door and the other door, so, you know, that's a good thing. I assume the fridge is working. Yes, it feels cold. That is a good thing. There's no toilet. It must be outside set up of some basic things. That small roach can go outside. Every time that I've moved into a new place, every time I've moved into a new home, you do it with people and you, you do it with a sense of having chosen and knowing. So it's not like someone just says, okay, this is, this is your address to go to. I have heard so many stories of people sleeping on mattresses in housing and then having bed bugs, it makes you feel, it makes you feel worried. The reality that you're living on 10 bucks a day because you need a place to stay and this place costs 30 bucks a night, that is a pretty daunting prospect. There's going to be a lot of white wall staring. Over the past two days, Conservative commentator Caleb Bond has had his hardline views on welfare tested. As I saw with Pierre, uh, getting to the end of the week or close to the end of the week and not having any money to spend on food or essentials like that um, seems pretty poor, to be honest. But he wants to know more about the DSP, so he's travelling to nearby Redfern to meet Vic, who also lives on the disability pension. Vic's flat is in one of three large social housing blocks. It's a weird feeling in this building. There's a strange smell and it seems halfway between effluent and a dead animal. Now, this is a strange environment for me. A fish out of water, I suppose. Vic is legally blind and after rent is taken out, she lives on $49 a day. Vic. Hello. My name's Caleb. Hey, Mom. Nice to meet you. Come in. Thank Go you. That way. Thank you. It's a lovely place you've got in here. You've decorated well. Tell me about all your vases just, and I Buddhas like, and all I sorts like, of stuff. I just like I just like them. Well, yeah. how long have you had your tattoos? Oh probably going back twenty years. This one I just started to get yesterday. Oh, OK, that's a new one. It's a koi, but I've got to go back in two weeks to get it all coloured, just so I could save it for my tattoo. Do you find you're able to save? Yeah, well, I, look, I'm an alcoholic, but I've been sober nine years. OK. I find that if you give up what addictions you have, no matter what they are, you know, stop using them as a crutch, do something with your life, you can have a pretty decent life. You know, I mean, I eat well, I don't miss out on very much at all, yeah. you know. 
So, but you know, you get all people, especially you know, the flats and everything, saying, "Oh, poor me, poor me," and they're all junkies, most of them, mm. you know. And you know, the government should be giving me more money. Well, no. Go to rehab, get clean, and you can have a half decent life. But it's a trade-off too, with all the violence that goes on in the flats. What sort of violence goes on in the flats? Well, I've been raped multiple times. Here. Yeah, home invasion, assaulted multiple times. And that's in Redfern. If Vic just had somewhere decent to live, her quality of life would just be so much better. It annoys the shit out of me. Average two murders a year the last few years. Two murders a year? Average. In this building? Yes. I'll show you where the last guy was murdered. That one in there. He was murdered last December before last. So, so who was living in there? Drug dealer. Yeah, I'll show you in the laundry room. How do you feel when you walk into your laundry? I start sweating and my heart beats faster. Every, every time you come in Every here. time I come into the laundry. Because someone gets you in here, you're gone. Mm. Do you think the pension is enough? For me, it is. If you want to shop smart and you haven't got any addictions, I think it's fine. You wouldn't give yourself any more money? I'd love to give myself... I'd love Morrison to give me more money, but it, it's not feasible. I don't know where people think all this money comes from. I mean, every dollar has to be borrowed and it has to be paid back. But, no, oh, no, the government can do it. They've got plenty. You're saying that the money you have in your pocket is enough to live on yep. and have some luxuries, yep. like all the stuff you, yep. you have in your house and you're getting a tattoo. But what if you had extra money in your pension that allowed you to get a decent private rental? I'd be out of here in a shot. Mm. You know, who wants to put up with all this violence? Threats and, you know... <coughs> Vic is one tough cookie. She's been through a lot of shit, but she's picked herself up and dusted herself off, and she's resolute. Well, Vic, <laughs> it's uh, about time for me to leave. Oh, go on, piss off. You, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Come on. Come on. My first experience of someone on the disability support pension was that they didn't seem to be able to get through the week on the money they had. I saw Pierre's experience and thought, oh, well, poor him, we should give him more money. Having now seen that, that Vic is able to live reasonably comfortably on the money she has and by her own admission um, enjoys quite a few luxuries, I'm kind of doing a 180 from where I was yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted at the moment, which is, you know, I, I think it's good. It's making me think about it. It's what I came here to do. The thing that sticks out for me that is consistent for both of them is the shit they have to put up with in Housing Commission. Could you survive on welfare? It's a question that's led Jenny Leong, Julie Goodwin and Caleb Bond on a journey. After couch surfing in Surrey Hills, Caleb's decided to find his own place to sleep. Fair enough. Welcome to my humble abode. Jenny is spending her first night alone in Port Kembla. It was three dollars or two ninety nine, so three dollars, and so now I've got a dollar, um, a dollar thirty five left. Julie continues to battle isolation in crisis accommodation. Actually, have found this experience of, of cooking a meal just for myself a little bit depressing. But Christian, when he was driving me around the other day, was saying that he knows people that don't know when they get up in the morning how they're going to put a meal on the table at night. They've met welfare recipients trying to get by on the job seeker allowance and the disability support pension. I've been very, very close to having a cigarette. The only thing that has stopped me is that I now know how bloody expensive they've become. But I'm fucked if I can work out how I'm going to cook sausages in a microwave. If you think this journey has turned me into a socialist, you're wrong. Possibly the world's saddest bowl of mashed potato. 
but I have more empathy now than I did before for people on welfare. I've seen it now. I've experienced it. And to a certain degree, I've lived it. The welfare system, it does not help people out of poverty. It doesn't. It just doesn't. 660. There you go. There you go. All together. All together. What we've got is not working. Next time on Could You Survive on the Breadline? Marianne. Hi. Caleb, Jenny and Julie are faced with the question, could you support a family on welfare? We need to fucking get you out of this situation. As the immersion continues, all three reach breaking point. There should be no fucking cockroach infested house in the first place. Will there be a sense of relief when he passes? I, I don't understand 